We'll have the latest. Also, 75 years after the first Caribbean migrants arrived in Britain, how many are still fighting for equal treatment? That's BBC News Hour at nine on WNYC. The party of free markets reconsiders. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by UiPath, providing organizations the UiPath AI-powered business automation platform. More at uipath.com slash marketplace. UiPath, the foundation of innovation. And by UKG, an HR payroll and workforce management solution designed to help make a fairy tale workplace a reality. UKG, our purpose is people. From Marketplace, I'm Sabri Beneshore, in for David Brancaccio. The Republican Party has long been associated with free market capitalism, the idea that letting the market work its magic can solve a lot of problems efficiently. Well, Republican views on that appear to be changing. A group from the more populist wing of the party unveiled a kind of ac- economic manifesto yesterday on Capitol Hill. It marks a departure from the party's traditional economic thinking. Marketplace's Nancy Marshall Genzer was there. The manifesto calls for eliminating the trade deficit and encouraging manufacturing in the U.S. Florida Republican Senator Marco Rubio told the audience the GOP should be more skeptical of the free market, especially when corporations do things like move their factories to China. Because the market says it is more efficient to make medicine in China, basically make anything in China. But it's not in our national interest. So, and, and it's certainly not in our national interest to create these pockets of despair as well in America. This group of Republicans also supports guarantees for workers to organize and join unions, although they would also bar unions' political spending. Senator Todd Young, an Indiana Republican, wants to ban non-compete clauses that block a company's employees from going to work for a competitor or starting their own businesses. You trap employees in that relationship and don't give them the freedom to leave and apply their skills where they can be applied, where there's the most economic value added. The manifesto also pushes for a monthly benefit of up to $350 per child for working families, and it backs a financial transaction tax that would target what it calls unproductive and speculative transactions by investors. I'm Nancy Marshall Genzer for Marketplace. We talk a lot about job openings, the tightness of the labor market, economic statistics that paint a picture of our economy. But that sometimes hides the fact that the U.S. is made up of multiple economies. The Labor Department has released some state-by-state data about job openings and labor turnover in April. And yes, the labor market is tight everywhere, but there are some parts of the country where employers are having an especially hard time finding workers. Marketplace's Justin Ho has more. The labor market is tightest in the South, along with the Midwest and in New England. They have very high job openings compared to the number of unemployed persons. That's Megan Schoenberger, senior economist at KPMG. A big reason the labor market is so tight in the South, she says, is that a lot of people have been moving there. But many of those people are starting up businesses, which creates demand for even more workers. That's sort of robustified economies in geographic regions, and now they need a lot more labor, and it's just not there yet. Meanwhile, the labor market is tight in the Midwest and the Northeast because unemployment rates there are falling. Charlie Doherty, senior economist at Wells Fargo, says that's not necessarily because more people are finding jobs in those areas. Instead, it's because people are leaving. Because folks are increasingly moving away in search of better job opportunity. And Doherty says they're finding that in states like Florida, South Carolina, and Georgia. I'm Justin Ho for Marketplace. Okay, let's do the numbers. The FTSE in London is down nine-tenths of a percent. S&P, Dow, and NASDAQ futures also down around two-tenths of a percent, with the Dow future down 71 points. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Amazon Business. From small business to big enterprise and everything in between, Amazon Business helps simplify the supplies buying process. Amazon Business, your partner for smart business buying. And by JLL, striving to be a commercial real estate partner that can create lasting change for good in business, communities, and the planet. JLL.com. See a brighter way. And by Total Wine and More, where you can find a new favorite Chardonnay, sparkling wine, or tequila. Spirits not sold in Virginia and North Carolina. Drink responsibly. Be 21.
The past few months, sales of existing homes have been low. Inventory has been limited. Interest rates are high. How the housing market is pretty tight. Later this morning, we will see if that has changed at all when the latest numbers come out. But for now, sellers and buyers sometimes have to compromise and get creative. Ali Budner has more. Lisa Sturdivant is chief economist with Bright MLS. She's seeing more and more buyers compromise on their dream home, like going in on a purchase with family. So going in and buying a home with mom and dad so that multiple generations can live together and can pool their resources to afford the mortgage. Or some home buyers are opting to remain renters in their current place, but buy properties so they can be landlords. That's more the case when buyers realize they can't even remotely afford the home they want, so they buy a cheaper investment property to build equity. They can then convert that into a purchase of a home that they ultimately will live in that can check more of those boxes. And then there are those buyers who don't need to worry about interest rates. Daryl Fairweather is chief economist at Redfin. We're also seeing a record share of homes being bought with all cash. On the seller side of things, Fairweather says many homeowners just aren't selling. If they need to move, they end up renting out the homes. They can collect the rent and pay off their very low interest rate mortgage and still keep it. But some homeowners need to sell. And if they have a low interest mortgage rate locked in, offering to sell that loan along with the house can be a major perk. It's called an assumable mortgage. Craig O'Boyle is a realtor in Colorado Springs and co-owner of Assumption Solutions, which helps with this kind of loan transfer. You buy a home and you take over the existing mortgage that's in place on the property. But there's a caveat. It's mostly only VA or FHA loans that qualify. Nicole Wilkinson is a realtor in Boise, Idaho. One of her clients has an older mortgage from the VA at a pretty low interest rate. My seller thought that this would be a good opportunity to allow a new buyer to come in and be able to assume their um, interest rate. And in fact, the first line on the listing's flyer touts the property's 2.75% VA assumable loan, before mentioning the hardwood floors and stainless steel appliances. And Wilkinson says they've had tons of interest, and that rate will likely lead to a higher sale price. But there are drawbacks. It's a lengthy process, which can be quite clunky. But she says that's one hurdle some buyers and sellers are willing to deal with in this squeezed market. I'm Ali Budner for Marketplace. And in New York, I'm Sabri Beneshore with the Marketplace Morning Report. From APM, American Public Media.